They're the people that keep blowing our minds via the written word. I have committed, even before setting pen to paper, the essential crime that contains all others in itself. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 iconic figures in sci-fi literature. More popular than the celestial home care omnibus? Better selling than 53 more things to do in zero gravity? And more controversial than Oolong Kalufid's trilogy of philosophical blockbusters, Where God Went Wrong? For this list, we're focusing only on science fiction authors and not on the characters or beings they created. Ugly gorillas, ugly, go away. Number 10, Michael Crichton. This Harvard-educated writer once plagiarized George Orwell in college, but only to expose the unfair grading techniques of one of his professors. By 1969, the six-foot-nine Michael Crichton had published The Andromeda Strain, which became the first of many sci-fi novels to be adapted for the big screen. No, Jeremy, don't let him cut off my oxygen. No! The air in that room is loose! Air doesn't matter. Blood does. That's the answer. By combining his medical knowledge with a passion for writing, the Chicago-born novelist composed classics like Jurassic Park, Congo, and Sphere before his 2008 death. Gifted and versatile, Crichton even directed several films. Bloody hell, you look a sight. I look a sight. No, but you're all covered in soot. He was and is a major influence in the sci-fi genre. Well, a lot of my research is, is directed toward answering some kind of a question. And I've got the question answered before I start to write the book. You do? Yeah. So now the writing the book is just a sort of... Number nine, William Gibson. When I was a kid, the future uh, almost always had a capital F. Everything in it was new and futury, and it, it was unconsciously assumed to have no past content. Cyberpunk and the phrase noir prophet go hand in hand when describing this living legend of the sci-fi genre. Good morning. This is your wake-up call. Thank you for staying at the New Darwin Inn. The time is 10.30 a.m. By exploding into the literary world with 1984's Neuromancer, a story about a down-and-out hacker, Gibson won the sci-fi triple crown, the Nebula, Hugo, and Philip K. Dick Awards. What I would do for, for these futures, what I would just take, take the conditions of the third world and transfer them to, say, Chicago. It sold more than six million copies, giving enthusiastic readers a heavy dose of mind stimulation they would never forget. And the hits kept on coming when Gibson managed to innovate the steampunk genre with The Difference Engine in 1988. Cyberpunk, noir prophet, steampunk. There's a cool nickname out there that hasn't even been discovered yet. And it belongs to William Gibson. Technophobia or technophilia are appropriate responses to our situation. I think the only appropriate response is the most profound ambivalence. Number eight, George Orwell. His real name was Eric Arthur Blair, and he created a dystopian legend that freaked out paranoid citizens of the world after 1984. With that one work alone, George Orwell reached iconic status, but unfortunately he would pass away just seven months after its publication. Writing a book is a horrible, exhausting struggle, like a long bout with some painful illness. One would never undertake such a thing, if one were not driven by some demon one can neither resist nor fully comprehend. His imagination left a firm imprint on the sci-fi genre, and his linguistic approach proved that sometimes less is more. When a farm is rich, but we'll never get our rightful share from Farmer Jones. Sayings and phrases he originated, like doublethink, cold war, and thought police, are part of everyday language. In principle, the war effort is always planned to keep society on the brink of starvation. His resume extends far beyond his famous Big Brother novel, but for sci-fi lovers, it's the work that will always endure. Sweet, uh, sweet Julia. 
I don't care what you do to him, but do it to her. Tear her face off and do it to Julia, not to me. Number seven, Arthur C. Clarke. Now, space is no longer all fiction. The world has seen the incredible achievements of the last decade. As one of the big three writers of science fiction, this British novelist predicted online banking and also penned the screenplay for Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Although his dreams of space travel were never achieved, Arthur C. Clarke actually discovered an ancient temple in Sri Lanka where he lived the last 50 years of his life. He's been called the prophet of the space age and helped sci-fi fanatics embrace their inherent nerdery. He's also one reason why many recognize that science can be cool. In the world of the future, travel will be for pleasure, not necessity. 2001 is the work for which he is most known, but Clark's subsequent novels expanded on that story's premise, thus establishing a lasting legacy for all to enjoy. Light is common throughout the universe, and that probably intelligence is also common. This idea has not reached the public, which associates it purely with fiction. Number six, Ray Bradbury. I suppose you wonder why I've called you all here. I want to identify myself. I'm Ray Bradbury. But you're very curious, aren't you, to find out how I fell in love with books. Inspired by Edgar Allan Poe and thrilled by Hollywood stars, this Midwestern American writer achieved both his literary and Tinseltown dreams. Ah, what's that? What is it? A sundown! That's right! Mark it! Mark it! After moving to Hollywood as a teen, Ray Bradbury sought out famous writers and ultimately published The Martian Chronicles the year he turned 30 years old. I think perhaps he should do the honors. Before long, French New Wave filmmaker François Truffaut brought Bradbury's work to a wider audience by memorably adapting his 1953 novel Fahrenheit 451. Bradbury's writing career continued for more than 60 years, and although he didn't identify himself as a sci-fi writer, he's been tabbed as a Midwest surrealist. Space travel is going to enable us to live forever. That's its most important function. Yes, we wish to guard the gift of life. Number five, Douglas Adams. I, I would say I've certainly always been a sort of slightly sort of dreamy sort of person. This British novelist created The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy as a BBC radio comedy in 1978. What do you mean you've never been to Alpha Centauri? Oh, for heaven's sake, mankind, it's only four light years away, you know. And published a book of the same name at only 27 years of age. Douglas Adams once claimed that inspiration came from a drunken night under the Austrian stars, and his musings on science, religion, and technology reached numerous media platforms. Guys, I'm delighted to tell you that there are two thermonuclear missiles heading right for us. If you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and take evasive action. In fact, the Hitchhiker franchise became a pop culture sensation. And just a few years after Adams' untimely death, a new generation was introduced to his work through a feature film. What I would like to be when I grow up is a clone, so there can be about half a dozen of me, and one would be a rock star, one would be an evolutionary biologist, a software engineer, and one would probably stay in bed all day watching movies. Number four, Philip K. Dick. Sorry, Quaid, your whole life is just a dream. This sci-fi legend made our list, but what list is he really on? Philip K. Dick questioned our existence as human beings and created alternate settings to explore the relationship between perceived truths and the unsolved mysteries of life. Many awards were presented during his lifetime, but the author's popularity heightened after his 1982 death. Six, seven, go to hell or go to heaven. <laughs> That's when Blade Runner and Total Recall, film adaptations of his stories, were released. You blew my cover! His postmodernist views inspired the essence of modern sci-fi and equally mysterious writers like the late Roberto Bolaño. If you've won the Philip K. Dick Award, you've won something truly special. I may be talking about something that does not exist, 
Therefore, I'm free to say everything or nothing. Number three, Jules Verne. Whoever descends into the crater of Snaffles, you cool, can reach the center of the earth. This French author has been called one of the fathers of science fiction and has influenced explorers, astronauts, surrealists, and of course, novelists. Oh my gosh! Nemo swimming out the sea! <gasps> Nemo! Today, everybody knows about a fish called Nemo, but he gets his name from Verne's Captain Nemo and 1870's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I'm not what is called a civilized man, Professor. I have done with society for reasons that seem good to me. Therefore, I do not obey its laws. Verne also traveled underground, notably in his journey to the center of the Earth, which may have been scientifically flawed, but demonstrated the overwhelming power of imagination. Mushrooms! A forest of mushrooms! They may be hundreds of years old, but, but the small ones we can eat are delicious! He took us on wild adventures and proved just how fun literature can be. Number two, Isaac Asimov. We make up futures. It doesn't matter whether we really think they'll come to pass or not, but we ask ourselves only, will this be interesting to deal with? Will this make a nice story? Prolific and proficient in the ways of sci-fi, this Boston University professor became another of the big three writers of his genre. A robot cannot harm a human being. The first law of robotics. Yeah, I know, I've seen your commercials. But doesn't the second law state that a robot has to obey any order given by a human being? What if it was given an order to kill? Impossible. It would conflict with the first law. Isaac Asimov's Foundation series about a galactic empire spanned decades, and his enormous contributions to science fiction literature earned him the one-time Hugo Award for the best all-time series. His 1941 short story Nightfall announced a shift in sci-fi writing towards the human element. Technically, you can't commit murder, can you? Does this make us friends? Like many other giants of the genre, his work was eventually adapted for the big screen. Why did you do that? That wasn't very funny. Just keeping you on your toes. I don't have any toes. You do now. But perhaps his most fitting tribute came in 1981, when an asteroid was named after the Russian-American author. People who are young people today know that when they're middle-aged, life will be nothing like mm -hmm. what it is now. And science fiction gives them an opportunity to try on different societies. Before we read up on our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Ender, we're entering their atmosphere. We need to slow down. We can't. We're one unit now. We're not equipped to handle the heat of passage through an atmosphere. Our drones are our heat shield. Keep falling. Let gravity do the work. God damn you! God damn you all to hell! Number one, H.G. Wells. As the 20th century approached, this English writer rattled off four important sci-fi novels, The Time Machine, The Island of Dr. Moreau, The Invisible Man, and The War of the Worlds. Come on out! We're friends! Hey, that's right! We welcome you! We're friends! Yeah! Undoubtedly the big papa of science fiction, H.G. Wells wrote The War of the Worlds 40 years before Orson Welles shocked the world with his infamous radio broadcast. Look out, man! Stand back! Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most terrifying thing I, I've ever witnessed. Herbert George Wells heavily influenced both American and British writers during his lifetime. As George Orwell once said, H.G. Wells was too sane to understand the modern world. Do you agree with our list? Who do you think is the most iconic figure in sci-fi literature? For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. So long.
and thanks for all the fish. Thank you.